So um, this remember mm-hmm. uh, futures. So you did ask what futures is. Mm-hmm. And futures mm-hmm. is really discussing. It's things. not. It's not. It's give not me your palm. palm reading. It's uh-huh. not palm uh-huh. reading. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here I can it is see a that you that have... you're gonna get a boy and two yes. girls. <laughs> no, it's it's really is about the strategy. Mm-hmm. So traditional strategy making is about looking at the history and the present, and then asking what do I want to achieve, mm. right? Mm. But what we don't recognize is that you have no control of mm. what that future will look like. Mm. So futures thinking is the science of trying to figure out what the future might, and that's why we use the word might 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 look like. Mm. And that's why you don't have an official future. Probable. One. Mm. Yeah, it's a probability. Mm. So you have four different futures mm. that you may have to face. Mm. Given parameters that in your own reading and analysis, mm. you see will inform mm-hmm. how things will work out mm. in the future. Mm. And then you use those mm. probabilities to bring back and mm. say, what would I, if I was building strategy, mm. what would I do in these mm. different circumstances? Mm. Usually, mm. the idea is not to predict anything. Mm. So it, you're not meant to be accurate. Mm. Okay? Mm. You're meant to analyze it in a way that mm. they, they, all these four mm. are likely to give you a very robust strategy mm. of what to do and what not to mm. do. But with also within particular areas of margin. Yes, within mm. particular areas of margin. Mm. But chances are that you will be mm. much more prepared than mm. somebody who just just give the linear projection of what the past has been Mm, and that's why it becomes a very interesting strategic tool to use Mm. because you've covered base Mm. you have your bad you've Mm. covered the bad Mm. you've covered the ugly Mm. you have covered the best Mm. and somewhere there you have an innovative Mm. side of things speaking of covering base it is futures futures and future thinking has been uh, heavily used by the military it has because you originally see, actually yes yeah because in, you see in in a in a battle mm-hmm. you don't know what is mm-hmm. gonna happen mm-hmm. and so you need to try and get into the minds mm-hmm. of your opponents and exactly say, if i was the one mm-hmm. what is our terrain looking mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you study that you study mm-hmm. the different strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. of those mm-hmm. particular mm-hmm. sides or mm-hmm. their thinking so mm-hmm. so that by the time you you have a military strategy mm, because mm. it's a matter of life and death yeah, actually it is so you you are much more likely to succeed than mm. if you just went blindly mm, mm. in this combat and mm, you know mm, liwe liwano mm, mm. so it began to be adopted um in in, in the us mm-hmm. with the rand corporation to discuss mm-hmm. policy mm-hmm. In the UK, with a shell company, mm-hmm. and, uh, shell the corporation. the Shell mm-hmm. Corporation, mm-hmm. and and the and, and that it became then it was adopted for mm. for business strategy. For business strategy. So in Kenya, we used it uh, very powerfully mm-hmm. for uh, policy mm-hmm. thinking, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. why then this first mm-hmm. product was mm-hmm. fascinating mm-hmm. in that regard. Mm-hmm. But then now this second mm. time we're using mm. it for a very topical issues mm. like issue like mm. youth bulge and mm. youth demographic mm. issues. Mm. So in Kenya, mm-hmm. who are the front runners mm-hmm. in, in this kind of work? In this kind of work. At least at the policy Other space, than yourself, yes. At the policy <laughs> space, then the Institute of Economic, Economic Affairs, Affairs and yeah. SID, Society for International Development, yeah. where I had the opportunity of yeah. serving in both organizations. Yeah. And in terms of individuals. Individuals, I think so the individuals yeah. that worked in yeah. both organizations. Yeah. Uh, so there was cool. the current CS yeah. uh, for trade yeah. uh, and industrialization, Betty Miner. Betty Miner. And uh, the gentleman that was leading SID at the time was Arthur Moliro. He uh, works in Rome. Right. So those are the two. Uh-huh. And then the individuals who worked on the scenarios project, yeah. I would say they are experts in their own right yeah. by the fact that they went through that process. Yeah, yeah. So um, I am one person who was in that space that actively took it as a career. Yeah. You, you so actively, went to school for yeah. it yeah. and practiced it yeah. through and the different organizations. Yeah. 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 All right, right. okay. So um, in Africa, actually, mm-hmm. Africa mm-hmm. arguably has the least number of futurists. Mm-hmm. Other parts of the world, that number is going, obviously. Mm-hmm. With COVID, mm-hmm. obviously, people then begin to see the value of this mm-hmm. kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. And so many more people want mm. to learn mm. the art of futures thinking. Mm. 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 So um, one of the things I'm actively doing in my work is to build um, mm. capacity, capacity around them. Mm. Mm. Yeah. This is a message from younger people mm-hmm. to older people mm. in the policy making space. Mm-hmm. And it's a very scary piece of work. Sure. It leaned more on the negative side. Mm. Mm. because of where young people are, mm. the disgruntlement, the mm. lack of hope, the mm-hmm. lack of opportunities. Mm. 
and I'm telling you, mm. it was unpalatable mm. for a lot of policy mm. makers. Mm. It's interesting how, though, in 2013, mm. this work, mm. um, again, uh, from different sources of people working in different presidential campaigns mm. and so forth, mm. it was a major reference point. Mm. And I think dominated mm. this because of what the scenarios were saying it could produce. Could. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it sort of like... Um, can I say centralized mm. that issue of mm. and the urgency mm. of the mm. youth wealth issue mm. and unemployment mm. in Kenya? That one. So know. the work, like we said, has fun. We use the water bodies as mm-hmm. an analogy mm-hmm. again because we we talk about what might happen. Mm-hmm. It means they they are not. We say there are no facts in mm-hmm. the future, right? Mm. And so the reason you use analogies mm. is your storytelling because mm. those are probabilities. Mm. So the stories then mm. take on the form of typical sure. stories sure. Mm. the hare and the rabbit mm. type of thing mm. so in this case mm. the water bodies described those different scenarios mm. very powerfully mm. so the first scenario was like a pond mm-hmm. a pond is where we say we are young people mm. but opportunities are not there mm. and so young people medicate or drug themselves or pretty much become redundant mm. Uh, because of the the lack of opportunities they find themselves in so they're like a pond Mm. uh, you know full of opportunities but really dead Mm. right Mm. the second one was a waterfall Mm -hmm. the waterfall is where we are saying young people are a powerful force Mm. and like a river that is coming down Mm. you can actually create opportunities and you know a waterfall like it, it because of that momentum the water is I don't know whether it's clean, but it's momentum. Mm, mm. And the issue we were trying to communicate there, that story embodies the momentum mm. and the possibilities that young people can bring on board mm. if you incorporate them into this development process. Mm. The third scenario was called tsunami. Mm. And tsunami is the most memorable because it says destruction. Mm. So in unlike the pond scenario where young people resign to their mm. fate, mm. these ones they take matters into their hands. Mm. And they decide that if we are disenfranchised, everybody else yes. will be. Yeah. And so it's haywire. Mm. All right. So mm. it's a destructive force. Mm. And the last scenario is is the ocean scenario. Mm. And this scenario we say mm. there are opportunities for Kenya and mm. by extension Africa. Africa. Mm-hmm actually give young people endless possibilities mm. and and, and mm-hmm. like an ocean mm. those endless possibilities means we mm. coexist mm. and even build such an incredible future mm. as a society mm. by incorporating the potential of young people mm. into these discussions mm. so that that was very powerful mm. now it's so interesting I, I didn't recognize how this work was was until mm. and like I mean the response of the policy makers was very discouraging. Mm. Mm. But then the outcome <laughs> of it, people actually used it. They didn't formally engage with it because mm. bad news. The bad news was too bad. Yeah, it like was me. it was too huge. Was too, too bleak. yeah, too yeah. bleak to to, to so, imagine. But people got a sense of urgency, mm. and you 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 saw in the like uh, in in 2013, mm. uh, you know, campaigns mm-hmm. the eventual. Uh, you know allocation of resources mm. to youth programs was mm. it was e- exponential mm. of course there's the governance side of it mm-hmm. that then you know resources may not have been used mm. uh, the way where they were supposed to be used but mm. still mm. it looks like we we were successful it was tilting towards the positive the message and the then right you can place. see yeah a lot of funding then began to went mm. a lot in escalated mm-hmm. on youth mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. as well mm. so and and now you know like mm. one of the most funded sectors is mm. anything youth and employment yeah you see? yeah mm. so i i we say that we had a contribution to mm. make in that mm. regard mm. interestingly mm-hmm. an organization uh, called ymc mm-hmm. which has an africa-wide network mm. came calling and said you know what you did with that work mm. just replicate this mm. africa-wide mm. so we had an exact same mm. process anchored mm. on agenda mm. 2063 mm. and did a fact book on mm. how africa would look like in 2016 mm. just mm. looking at the issues of mm. it mm. and the work is online mm. and then did a, a scenarios mm. exercise around mm. that mm. we produced three scenarios mm. a blue ocean a blue scenario mm-hmm. green mm. and red this is now for africa for africa mm. What I remember very interestingly is how 
tech in those scenarios was going to be a game changer. Mm-hmm. And there's no brain now, of course. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I mean, the mechanics, when you read the stories, it's mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Like we say, we are going to actually, we are going to be so water scarce mm-hmm. by 2063 that have, we are going to be harvesting dew. I mean, it was incredible. It mm-hmm. was an incredible piece of work. Mm. But you see, it was upon somebody else to sort of like disseminate mm. that. So mm. I never quite followed through. Which is when you think about it, a possibility. It but the point here, the point here that that was we were making is that when you look at different vision processes, what tends to happen is that so as as individuals, we have lived a certain life. Mm. But we think about 2063, your child, my mm. child will mm. be in their 40s. That's correct. Right? Mm. And based on that, they are going to have a very different sort of like culture from the way we've grown up in mm. and so forth, right? Mm. But when you think, when you read visions like Agenda 2060, they are really projections of the past mm. and not taking into account those fundamental shifts that are going to be happening in them. Mm. And that's the danger because then at the point that they have to be executed, they are not relevant. Mm. And so this process was trying to say, let's look at what might happen in 2063 but mm. what is the role the centralized role of young mm. people mm. 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 so it was amazing in that regard so eventually anyway after this project mm. i think i had done everything i could do in IU. so I, uh. I i i left Oh dear. And moved on to Society for International Development. After scaling the heights and after showing the world, Africa, <laughs> the extent yeah. of c- scenarios yeah. uh, in that regard. Um, uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come to SSID uh, in, in, in just a bit. 